Let's talk a little bit about what Tempest does. I, I think it sounds incredibly interesting. It uses artificial intelligence to try and collect data that you find in, in patients' medical records to try and make sure that you are getting them the best possible care and access to all kinds of different uh, tests and, and drugs that might be out there. And I, I think it came about because of your experience with your wife, who was diagnosed with breast cancer back in 2015. What, what did you all find during that experience? Yeah, I was just perplexed at how little uh, data had permeated her care. You know, I, I used to say to people, it was like amazing. You, you know, I, I, she had fantastic care, but I would go to the hospital and it was like being teleported back in time, you know, 20 or 30 or 40 years. This was about five years ago. And I thought there has to be a better way. There has to be some way to bring the power of big data and artificial intelligence to healthcare. And so we built a system to basically combine clinical and molecular data at scale so we could help figure out you know, who these patients were, what drugs they were taking, how they were responding, and ultimately why. And then um, our, our kind of approach was a bit unique, and it was to uh, embed the power of this technology into the test itself. So we began sequencing patients because in cancer, that's the laboratory test most often used uh, in terms of uh, determining care. But we embedded all that clinical insight into the genomic test so that if we recommended a drug, it was going to be a drug the patient hadn't taken in a prior line of therapy. If we recommended a clinical trial, it would be a trial they were actually eligible for. And so the test was smart. It basically knew who the patient was, and it could help doctors make real-time data-driven decisions. And then we took that same technology uh, in cancer and then went into uh, depression about a year and a half ago and then recently went into infectious disease with, uh, with COVID. I, I mean, it's incredibly exciting. The, the one limitation I would think you might hit is just how bad electronic medical records are right now, if that's the source you're using for some of this. How, how are you able to, to maybe make best use of that? The, the answer is, is really scale. If, you're, if your N is large enough, if you have enough records, then you can kind of remove a lot of the noise. So we built, we use optical character recognition and natural language processing, and then a whole bunch of tools that we internally built to kind of ingest um, you know, millions of medical records, and then we go through and clean them up, pulling out about 100 data elements per patient. These are the kind of key phenotypic and therapeutic attributes of these patients. But the, the answer is you have to have an enormous volume of records because uh, medical records are noisy. And so if you only have a few, it's very hard to garner the insights you actually need to figure out what's happening. But if you have scale, then you can clean uh, these records up. And real world evidence has become more pervasively used as, as, as these backdrop technologies that didn't exist you know, even 10 years ago are now pervasive. So cloud computing and all these other um, AI tools that we built allow us to basically go into the medical record and rip out these key data attributes at scale. And then again, if you have enough of them, and in the case of Tempest, I think almost a third of all cancer patients in the US now touch the, of the, their data comes through Tempest. So you, if you have enough of these things at scale, you actually can, can uh, clean up some of that noise. Hey, Eric, I have a, a more specific question about some of the research that, that's possible from this. And I don't know how you went from Groupon to this. I mean, you're a quick learner or something. Uh, but you, even, even with, with COVID, you're, you're involved with something uh, called um, trans, transcriptome research. And, and I, I understand what that is. I, I don't think everybody's had enough uh, probably biology to understand. But you're looking at what's expressed differently in the genome of different people. And COVID people, some people respond, COVID patients, some respond to one thing, some respond to another, some uh, have uh, uh, less uh, beneficial effects from treatments. There's, there's all this wide diversity in cancer as well. And you can figure, you, you put that info into a computer and artificial intelligence? Are you able to dis discern things that make someone uh, special in terms of, of how they're responding and specific to their own genome? I mean, we, we, well, in theory, we should be able to. So in, in cancer, we do two kinds of, every time we sequence a patient, we do what's called genomic profiling and then transcriptomic profiling. Right. Genomic is DNA, transcriptomic is RNA. The RNA is a really interesting signature, especially for SARS-CoV-2 or COVID, because it's a, it's, that's, that's where the disease is propagating. And so what we do is we set out to look at uh, 50,000 patients that uh, were uh, COVID-19 positive, and then look at the clinical records. Now there's only, give or take, uh, three or four months of clinical data, but look at that clinical record. 
try to figure out who's responding to <clears throat> drugs like remdesivir or hydrochloroquine or you know, patients that took maybe an ACE inhibitor, like are they doing better or worse? Look at all that kind of clinical and therapeutic data and then do the transcript on the, or the RNA profiling of these patients and then try to figure out if there's some expression signature that leads us to be able to stratify patients into some population and say, okay, if your um, RNA signature is X, you're far more likely to have a problem than if it's Y. Because right. the, the problem with the COVID test is like, like cancer right. or, any, or any laboratory test, just knowing you're positive doesn't help you, right? right? You could be positive and asymptomatic, you could be positive and be fine, you could be positive and ultimately succumb well, to the disease. So you have to know more.